Hello, everybody. Welcome to PonderCast. I've got a uh, one of my newer friends, Bree Stein, <laughs> here. She's a foreign language teacher and a technology specialist, but uh, she is from a rival school down the street. And <laughs> kind of one of the things I tell our students is we can still collaborate with students all over and, and peers all over the country and even in our own city. But when it comes to like being on the court and on a field, <laughs> then we're rivals. <laughs> All right, so I'm really going to enjoy this one, and I hope you guys do too. Uh, so, Bree, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us where you're from and what your new job title is this year. Sure. So, um, like you said, I teach at a rival school, Ooh, but we all love to work together. Um, I teach at Adams High School in South Bend, um, and I actually teach Spanish part time. Um, so I just teach four classes, and then the rest of my day, I um, I forget how Allison said it. She said teach, support, and help. I don't know what she said, but I coach other teachers with technology and help them integrate it into their own classrooms. And one thing that your peers have just raved about you is that good at helping those teachers just implement technology into their classroom. So yeah. I can't wait to see what you're going to share with us. <laughs> yeah, something I tell teachers um, and when I'm like coming up with professional development and thinking about our meetings is not to focus on the tool. So don't tell them we're going to meet about Flipgrid. Tell them we're going to meet about giving students voice or, you know, what does it do for them instead of, well, here's another tool because then it just feels like another tool. You know, what am I going to do with this? To people like you and me, it's super intuitive to us. We see a new tool and we're like, oh, I could do this and this and this. But to not everybody, you know, thinks that way. So what can it do for you instead that's of what's the tool? That's a great way. I mean, that's what yeah. like Simon Sinek says all the time. Start with why. And you're explaining right. the why right, right in your titles. That's that's beautiful. Right. This is Milo. <laughs> Milo is in not only this video, but a lot of Bree's videos yes. for his classes. Like that. That's great. All He's right. a contributor. <laughs> He's right. got a lot of great, great ideas. Before we get started uh, talking about some the why in some of our tech stuff, let's get to know you. So are you ready for some questions? I guess. Okay, number one, what is your favorite color? Pink. All right, you're the first person that answered that. Like my my um, bumper on my Hummer. Well, not my whole bumper, but like the part underneath where my toe hook is is pink. What's your favorite podcast? Um, to be honest, a lot of the podcasts I listen to are not work related. It's like an escape. So I'm not actually going to say what my favorite podcast is because people might judge me. <laughs> oh, like one of my all time favorite ones was the one like the cereal one. It was all about a, a serial uh, or a killer, a high school student who killed um, another high school student. And like to this day, this is why I am so concerned on taking attendance in the first 10 minutes, because there was oh, no yeah. like all these teachers that were interviewed were like, <clears throat> maybe he was there. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was at track practice. Really, I like podcasts that, and I'm the same way with TV shows that have like a lot of levity and like are funny and just like kind of like are, are an escape, you know? Um, sure. But I do like, I listen to, um, um, is her name Amber Harper? I listen to her burned in teacher one. I listen to like Google teacher tribe sometimes. So I listen to a few educational ones, but most of the time I'm just listening to like random girls like talk about their lives and laugh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Cause it's Cause nice. you're a real person. What's your favorite app? My favorite app. Um, I would have to say Instagram, Instagram yeah. for sure. I like Twitter for like professional networking, but I like all the pictures yeah. on Instagram. <laughs> and what's a recent book that you've read? I am reading right now. Um, Girl, wash your face by Rachel Hollis. It's like, a big craze. Um, it's pretty good. Good. When I get free time for reading, I'm mostly reading my textbooks for grad school. <laughs> That's right. And a big yeah. congratulations. You're starting uh, grad school at Purdue. Yeah. And what's your focus going to be? It's going to be a master's in education in learning design and technology. That sounds like fun too. <laughs> yeah. So it's a newer program. Um, and I used to think for a long time I wanted to go into administration, but this new role this year as the digital integration specialist has opened my eyes to that is the direction that I want to head, whether it's with, you know, an adult learning or K through 12 learning or with other teachers or whatever it may be. 
not really sure yet, but that's kind of the path. So that's great. And yeah. then what is your favorite class to teach? I think so far, my favorite class I've taught is Spanish two. Um, Spanish one is fun because it's so new to them. Um, but Spanish two, they have enough background that we can do a lot more. So um, I'm teaching two sections of Spanish two this year. Um, and a close second would probably have to be teaching heritage Spanish. That was really fun. We wrote books and we went on field trips and we did all sorts of really cool projects because the kids spoke the language. So that was super fun. So now that we've gotten to talk to you, you came up with like the great title that I'm probably going to go with this and you called it quick hitters. Quick so, hitters. <laughs> so I love that. And you know, you and I were talking beforehand how uh, starting with the why, but then also how you don't stick with one set, one program throughout your class. You might use Kahoot one day and mm -hmm. Quizlet another and uh, Google Slides another. So you call these quick hitters. So I'd love for you to share and tell us like why you use quick hitters, but then also share some cool uh, quick hitter tips that you might have. Okay, sure. Um, so to do this, I'm actually just going to like walk through a day or two in my classroom. So typically we'll have bell work and that might be like getting on Quizlet and just reviewing your words. That might be, you know, playing a game with a partner. It could be really anything. Um, as far as tech tools go, Quizlet is a big one. Um, we play a lot of Quizlet Live, which I saw your son, Lewis, is a big fan of. <laughs> we do a lot of Quizlet Live. Um, and I'm right now with my Spanish One kids, um, I'm doing the Fast and Curious Edu Protocol or EDU okay. Protocol or whatever you guys want to call them. You know, we do a few new sets like each day um, where we manage anywhere from like five to 10 words or 10 to 20 words or whatever. And I've adapted it a little bit to make it work for us. So we use Quizlet and then I also use quizzes. Um, I don't know if you've heard of that one. It, that one's super fun. It pulls up memes and the kids love it. Um, but it will give you a class accuracy. So I told my class, I said, if we can get a 90%, we will not take a vocab quiz and you will all just get 20 points and it'll be done. And they're like, oh yeah, right. And I've never seen more engagement. I mean, some of these kids that come into class 20 minutes late and they sit on their phone the whole time, they were like with it. They were gunning for it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's been super fun. We've been doing that for like the past week um, where we use, we use, we're using the same quizzes. So it'll show them the questions they got wrong they can look back at those. They can take a picture on their phone and study them at home. So when they come in the next day, we're going up, you know, 10% or whatever. So that's been super fun. They get, they got, they got really close, like an 87% or something like that. I might well, it probably didn't help that we had like snow days built in there. Too. Yeah. So yeah, keep in mind for those of you watching, <laughs> we have zero momentum right now. <laughs> I think we worked two days last week, one day this week. So it's been really hard, but um. <laughs> Yeah, we're actually recording this right now on uh, during yeah. the snow apocalypse or whatever. Yeah, what, what's the temperature? Negative seventeen. Yeah, the temperature, not the wind chill. <laughs> um, okay, so anyways, that's Quizlet quizzes. Really good for vocab, like quick formative assessments. Obviously, you know, I do Kahoot sometimes. One that we use for final review is called Gimkit. G I M K I T, kind of a newer one, and it's actually managed by high school students. But it's like a video game where the students earn money and they can go to a store and like level up, or they can even like ice out a classmate so they can't answer questions for two minutes. Or like, so that one's really fun, and they ask me like almost every day to play that one. So those are really fun. Um, I'm also a big fan of doing stuff in Google. So like earlier, you and I were talking about um, how I use collaborative slides. I just push this out with Google Classroom and I first make like a template slide and then I have a period six one and a period one because if you don't separate them, you've got everybody on the same um, class and that's not gonna work. Or the same slide, sorry. Um, so I always give them directions um, and we've done this a lot of times, so they're pretty good about 
putting their name on it and, you know, not messing with other people's work and that type of stuff. But what I really like about this is one, all my students are working in the same slide deck. And then I can also, I love going to um, grid view and I can see, you know, if Anna and Forrest are working or, you know, and I can see multiple kids at a time typing and what they're doing. And usually when they're working on this, I'm sitting like at the front of the room. Um, we have like countertops. I'm just be sitting up there and I'm looking at their work and I'm like, hey, Brad, look at that highlight. That's not right. Or, hey, look at this wrong verb tense or just calling stuff out. It's like rapid fire in there. And you'll have kids like, wait, what are you talking to me? Like, <laughs> it's a little chaotic, but um, they like it. Do you pre-determine um, which kids get which slides or do you just let them pick? So, no, I do not predetermine who gets what slide. I put right here in the directions, just find a slide. So let me find one that wasn't filled out. So this would be what all of the slides look like, just blank with their names. And then I sometimes I give them like a starter so they can get going easier. But I just tell them, get in there, pick a slide out, put your name on it. Once your name's on that slide, you go nowhere else, you know? Um, and they're really good about it. You know, the first time it can be a little crazy because they're just not used to it. Um, but I honestly, it doesn't bother me. I just kind of revel in the chaos. And, you know, if something I put here in the directions, you know, don't change the theme, don't delete anything. Because it does, sometimes it happens on accident though. And if it does, just hit undo. Like it's not going to break it. You know, it's not a big deal. And then another cool thing I like to do with these is because I push them out through Google Classroom, the students have access to them. So, you know, if Izane is thinking, wow, I know that Anna and Forrest did a really good job. I want to go back and look at theirs. She can do that. So that's something really cool and, you know, powerful for them to be able to do on their own time. Because we do do a lot of writing, which can be really hard for some kids. So. And is this in your Spanish one class or is this in Spanish in two that this, but you also do this in Spanish one, right? Yeah. I do stuff like this in Spanish one too. That's yep. Great. And they, I mean, that's mostly freshmen and they handle it just fine. And then I also do a lot of stuff like, um, you know, with Google maps. We, oh yeah. Tell us what you yeah. do with Google maps. That I love using Google maps and this is totally a Matt Miller thing. <laughs> um, when he comes and presents at conferences that I go to, I'll always use, you know, Spanish examples and, think he'll stump us but I'm like haha I'm the Spanish teacher in the room like in Spanish 2 um, in August this is the first time I did this actually we read a novel that took place in Guatemala and it talks about um, people um, uh, moving to the United States and you know it goes through different places like um, Mexico City and like just all sorts of different places um, in Central America, well, in North America, I guess. So I told my kids, and I think we did it like three or four times. <laughs> I said, okay, today I want you to go to Tijuana in Mexico. So they would look at Tijuana and I just kind of like let them be. Like, I don't really give them like, okay, I want you to find this, 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 and then I just let them have fun. And you know, I tell them to think about, you know, like, think about what you're looking at. What do you see? What do you notice? What's different? And then the next day, I think we looked at um, the capital city of Guatemala. And again, I just gave them like 10 or 15 minutes, which honestly, they could have done it all class. And they weren't messing around. They were really engaged and just amazed at what they were seeing. And then we did, you know, okay, compare what you saw in Guatemala with what you saw in Tijuana. And just cool stuff like that. Um, and, you know, on Google Maps, you can even go inside hotels and buildings and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Because for a lot of these kids, I mean, they're never going to go to those places, you know. So being able to show them those places definitely, you know, broadens their horizons. It was really cool. We do that with Spain, tons of places. I Actually, I lost track of time, which is a good thing because you've just <laughs> shared so many great quick hitter ideas. Quick hitters. I boom, love boom, it. Boom, boom. You don't uh, need to be married to one idea, you know? Keep it interesting. As we wrap up, where can people find you online to yeah. share these ideas with you? 
So I utilize Twitter quite a bit. It's Steins, S-T-I-N-E-S. Some people mess that up sometimes. So one more time. (laughs) S-T-I-N-E-S underscore Brianna, B-R-I-A-N-N-A. Got it. And I will link that below right here for for everybody. Thank you so much for being on, sharing stuff about foreign language, but stuff for every class can use. Um, Yeah. Again, even though you're at the other high school over the river, I know. we still love collaborating with you. Yeah. Please, everyone, like, share, and subscribe to this channel so that uh, Bree and I can keep sharing cool ideas. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Thank you.